Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. I'm at the Sig Sauer Academy with my good friend, Tom Taylor. And don't let Tom throw you off. He seems like a very approachable guy, but he is, in fact, and I know he's not going to cop to this, one of the most important guys at, at Sig Sauer. And Actually, I, my I, title is paying the ass here. See, so there, that's, there we that's go. The there we have it. He won't cop to it. He's a very modest guy. Appreciate so that, James. I, I am really honored uh, that, that you would even be on this. And in the context of it even, this is 20 questions for mm -hmm. you, for Sig Sauer, 20 questions mm -hmm. for you. This was something that our Patreon supporters, you and I talked about, mm -hmm. so our subscribe star supporters or Patreon supporters, you know how YouTube demonetization has been. Those are the guys that really keep our channel sure. afloat. And you know we don't hit you guys up for money, we don't hit you guys up for stuff because we've got uh, our, our supporters yep. keeping us afloat for TFB TV. So we have 20 questions from those ingrates uh, here, some of these here. These, these guys. Huh? Yeah, these right. guys. Yeah, they got 20 questions that they sent me. We actually received about 200. Many of them were, were duplicates. So there were a lot of things that people want to know about. Many of those things were actually answered in videos earlier today, like we talked about the MCX Spear and, uh, and some of the silencers, but many of them remain unfulfilled. All right. That's where we'll you do step our in, best buddy. to fulfill you today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start out with uh, a difficult question that I think you can run with. Which firearm had the most lengthy or complicated design and or manufacture process and why? Well, what I'd say was, as I watched it develop, is, is, is probably the MCX. New platform, sort of a, the, the intention of the MCX was to upgrade the M4, have a superior platform to an M4. Um, we knew all along the expectation of that gun was so high because of the units that were going to be using it. And so I think as you watch the, the maturation of the MCX, you know, when, you, when you look at SIG Forum or you read what people say, you know, why, why the hell does SIG have Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen, you know, whatever, and you promised me I could, you know, buy kits that were compatible to this, that, and the other thing, and then you obsoleted these and those. and. And so it, it gets really complex. And so to watch the MCX develop, very early adoption by Dev Group, by British SAS, by special units, all, most of the highest level special, not most, many of the special units around the world are using the MCX platform. Watching it develop was, was a little bit painful. I, I wasn't here for the very earliest stages, but I got here early enough to watch it transition to different generations. and. Uh, we, we kept making it better and better. A unit, you know, when, you, when you're trying to answer those kinds of units, and they call you and say, well, it won't shoot upside down, underwater, you know, backwards. And so you're like, well, let's see if we can try to accomplish that. Then let's go see if we can make sure it shoots upside down every single time. And so, so what that led to was feedback from this unit or that unit or a, a military contract in France, which we lost. They gave us great insight into some things we should do to maybe improve the platform. And so you had Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and so on. And, and, and what Ron Cohen would say if he were sitting here is, I don't like that I'm doing that to you, but I also don't care because if I have an opportunity to make a platform better, that's what we do here. Uh, we're going to make that platform better. So, so if you made me choose the most complicated that, that I've seen in my six years here and watching these things transform and, and go through all kinds of transitions and improvements, I'd, I'd say the MCX, making sure it ran, make sure it improved, make sure it answered all those, those, those requests and needs. Uh, it was it was a pretty complicated project. Is it safe to say that the MCX, much to the chagrin of many commercial users out there, is still being developed in a way? It's evolving. Always, uh, I, I would say there's very few platforms here that aren't always evolving because when you when you compete for contracts, you learn something and and you learn you learn this or that or or it, it had this issue and it bleeds into everything we do here. And so I think it because of what it's going through with the current military contract it's competing in. Uh, even though it's a different caliber and a little bit different platform, uh, we will always be learning in it. And, you know, Ron will say we, were, we will always evolve. Which gun is SIG the proudest of and why? Pretty abstract question, a tough one, in fact. That's really, really tough because, yeah. uh, you, you know, you got, you got on Germans, spot. you've got Swiss, you've got Americans, mm -hmm. you've got Sure. You know, we've got a lot of people that have been involved in a lot of things. So Think of it as an inkblot test. What so, just popped up in your head when I asked so, you that so, question? So odd as this may seem, the, the inkblot test had, had two guns. And, and maybe that's not a fair way to answer your question, but 
you'd be remiss if he didn't if he didn't call out the two two six. How sure. can you not? Legendary. Uh, it's it's legendary. Some people are really pissed off right now because I didn't say the P two ten. So I'm actually going to introduce a third gun, but the P three twenty is I think the gun that ha there, there's so much emotional investment in that gun. It's been selected by the U.S. military. It was quickly adopted by all the branches of the U.S. military. It's quickly growing. Um, even in the last 45 to 60 days, it's gaining on the 365 in popularity, which right now is probably the most popular gun in America. But um, the, the development of the 320, the modularity of the 320, some of the reasons you're here this week to see the, the maturation and the evolution of the 320. Um, uh, for me to answer that question, honestly, I'd have, I'd have to say that. Will SIG ever consider a re-release of a 5.5X series gun? Great question, tough answer, but the answer is likely no. Forgive me for being direct. Would you consider, and this is a James J. Reeves question. No. Would, <laughs> would you consider the 5.5, five, like the 551, 552, five, that series of guns, would you consider them to be obsolete? I thought you were going to ask me if I'd make one for you. That was why I said no. Um, that's a very interesting way to ask that question because obsolescence is, is interesting. It, if you put it in battle today, would it be a great rep weapon? I think it would be. Is an AK-47 obsolete? You, maybe you put it in that class. It, it, it is a classic rifle that just is not in production anymore. And I don't think the 5.5 was ever adopted at the level the MCX has been adopted at, so I guess that should tell us something. What happened to SIG Germany? So that's an interesting question. I mean, not a lot of people understand the ownership of SIG. It's when we do consumer research, vastly misunderstood brand. We're happy when people don't call us SIG Sawyer most of the time, because it's not Smith & Wesson, it's not, it's not Remington, it's not Colt, it's not uh, Ruger. It, all those, if you do consumer research on, on you know, flatline consumers, you know, not hardcore gun people, we're not a well-known brand. Uh, if you get into gun people, we're a much uh, more well-known brand. As a German and Swiss company, you have facilities in Switzerland and Germany, and so it's just like this winding road. And the German facility began to um, uh, transition manufacturing to the U.S. several years ago when, when Ron Cohen got here. Almost immediately, he began to explore why the U.S. Uh, branch was not successful. It was a it was a unsuccessful company. So Ron Cohen shows the, the the current owners bought the company in 2000. Ron Cohen shows up in 2004 and the first thing he realized is going to be really hard to make money. Find guns. This wasn't about a bad gun. This is about a bad business. Importing guns from Germany and trying to sell them way more expensively in the US was not a good business model. So Ron began to explore bringing production over to the US and started bringing more and more of the production and you know within the, the six years I've been here, there have been no German you know, made guns. It's been all U.S. production. Several years ago, the U.S. really became the, the flagship of the L&O management team. And they have a lot of other great brand, brands like Blauser and Mauser and Diana and you know, the, other, the other holding, Swiss AG, uh, is still a viable company. But, uh, but Germany was, was not really doing much uh, with the company, the, the manufacturing at all transitioned here. So it just made sense. To, to close that facility down. Uh, very difficult to close facilities in Germany. The government controls a lot of that process. I, I learned way more about German business than I wanted to through this process. Not an easy process, which is why we delayed and took as long as we did. Yeah, there was just, there was no real viable business reason for it, for it to stay in business. And it's, it's been interesting because the company is so misunderstood uh, in our ownership and where things are made. And, and so many people still don't fully understand that we are 100% American made in New Hampshire and, and all of our facilities, ammunition in Arkansas and so on. But it was interesting as you read the, uh, the internet uh, intelligence out there. Uh, Always reliable. So many people started throwing up red flags. Oh my God, SIG's in trouble. Sure. They thought, oh, what are they gonna do without Germany? Because then, the, then there's the other, I gotta say this, there's the other myth of, uh, well, the German guns are a lot better than the US guns. Mm -hmm. It's just a scenario that, that needed to happen. It, it needed clarity, and um, you know, there's there's no reason for the entity to exist. And so, um, it's just interesting that people are out there saying, "Oh my God, Sig's in trouble because Germany closed," and it hasn't really been a significant part of the business in a, in a very long time. Is it an unfair statement to say that perhaps the success of Sig U.S. was a nail, if not the nail, in the coffin for Sig Germany? Is that unfair? No, I don't think it's unfair. I, I don't think that was ever, there was never a grand plan. You know, we're going to transition all the manufacturing to the U.S. But the, the inefficiencies, the German government, uh, so many things in Germany made 
business more and more and more difficult. Clearly the U.S. is the dominant commercial gun market in the world. Exporting guns from Germany to the commercial market in the U.S., as well as military units around the world, the German government just began to make it very obvious they were going to make business very, very difficult, and that got worse and worse and worse and worse. And so I, th I think once that transition started, I think it was just a matter of time. You know, we, we, we certainly could have made this decision sooner, um, but like I said, the business protocols in Germany made it difficult, and, and just the, the desire to leave some thread of, of the original SIG in Germany was always there, but it was, it was absolutely the beginning of the end when that transition started. And, and, you know, to be honest with you, sometimes things come down to individuals and with the discipline that Ron Cohen had uh, in, in leading this charge and making sure the guns were, you know, if, if this was a situation where the, the German guns were coming over and, and being made in a uh, situation that wasn't pristine and, and good quality and well done and all those things, might have been a different story. I mean, the ownership and Germany might have felt a stronger need to continue to make guns, but when you look at data and you look at the demand and you look at the ease of doing business and those sorts of things in America um, and the quality of the products, I think it, like I said, it was, a, it was a decision that could have been made previous to when it was. Is a German 220, 226, 228 superior to a U.S. made 220, 226, 228, etc.? Not true. I mean, I don't want to offend anyone in Germany because the guns are fine. Mm -hmm. The X5s and X6s are spectacular. Um, but we know our quality levels. We, we know what the, the service levels of the German guns were before my time here. We know what our guns are here. We know the standards we have here. Elaborate. We read it all the time. Oh my God, I need a German SIG. It's better. Um, you know, the, the elaboration on that answer is we have data. Um, you know, you, you can say, the, a true statement would be there's a lot more sort of hand, handmade element <clears throat> to a, uh, a German SIG because machinery wasn't as sophisticated as it is here, so there was some hand interaction required with some of the guns. Is that good or bad? You know, what it says is it's not as consistent as, as possibly a, a, a product made on a, a more precise uh, piece of equipment. Absolutely, w would never say the German product is inferior. It's not inferior. It was what built the SIG brand. It's German engineering, Swiss precision, you know, all those things that work together to make it a great brand. That's what, that's what the, the very root of SIG Sauer was. But to say those products are, are superior would, would not be a true statement. It's just, it's just different. We know the statistics of professional units, civilians, customer service data that would suggest that there's, there's, no, there's no proof or no reason to believe that German product is superior to American made product. But we hear it all the time. They're more valuable on the internet. Oh my God, if, if SIG just made guns the way they used to, life would be great. And it's unfortunate because just like everything else on the internet, internet so many statements are made without fact, without data. It's frustrating to us because we know the facts. Why did you discontinue the eight inch MPX? So. Pissed me off. Yep. SBRs don't sell. Is the MCX Spear coming to the commercial market? The MCX Spear is going to be sold in the commercial market. Uh, it may not be cheap. We don't know what the demand is going to be, but why wouldn't we offer that to, to the consumer? We, 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 want that, we want that gun on the market. We don't know whether we'll sell 100 or 1,000 or whatever the number may be, but, but it will be available uh, commercially. 100% yes? Yes. Do we know how much and when yet? Um, we don't know exactly how much. Uh, it's not going to be cheap. Um, the when, it's not tomorrow, but it's not two years from now. Uh, where the F are the MPX caliber conversion kits? <laughs> this is such a frustration for us because what, when, when we're out of stock on conversion kits and accessories, and it's, it's one of the reasons, sidebar a little bit, why we're, we're, we have to be very committed to the P320 FCU. We prefer to build guns. The MPX is a very, um, challenging platform to build fast. So we don't do that. We don't, we're not gonna compromise quality for speed. There's so much demand for guns. If I'm selling you a, a Calex kit, I'm not building a gun. Mm -hmm. And so we are so far backlogged on M MPXs. There's, there's probably some of your patron members that are saying, why can't I find an MPX, period? Yeah. And so we just build guns. So not, a, not the greatest answer, but that's, that's the fact. And, Fortunately, we build enough 320s that we'll be able to sequester some parts to make sure we support 
our fire control unit project. But for the MPX, we just choose to build guns. And that's not the greatest answer, but that's what it is. Yes or no answer, is it still going to happen? Are there going to be conversion kits for the MPX? There's always a plan to have those, but like I said, we've never caught up. The interesting part is, you asked that question, a lot of people answer that question, but similar to the way, the way I answered the 8-inch MCX question, there's not tremendous demand. I mean, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't get chewed up over why don't you have conversion kits. So, you know, it, it's, one of the, it's a fine line in saying we want to take care of those customers who want it because those are our, some of our most valuable customers who really want those, those specialty products and conversion kits and all that stuff. But, but when we're backlogged on guns and there's not tremendous demand, it's like nobody's, nobody's uh, cutting through burning, the bullshit. Burning cutting our feet. through the bullshit. I'm, I'm hearing maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe it won't happen. Is that right? It may not. There we go. Will the MPX be made to accommodate 10 millimeter ever? Ever is a very long time. Uh, we have a strong desire to build a 10 millimeter M MPX. As I said in, in my other answer, we can't keep up with demand on the current MPX. It's, it's a great caliber for a lot of different reasons. So um, I would say that when we can get the, the engineering resources and when we can get just a little daylight on capacity, I'd love to build a 10 millimeter MPX. So, so let's, not, let's not put the word ever at the end of that. It's not on the immediate horizon, but love to build the gun. Next question. Will there be a 10 millimeter P320? <laughs> What's well, the next question? I'll, I'll answer that one in a little more shorter answer. Yes, there will be. I mean, maybe that's, I don't know exactly when, but there will be a 10 millimeter 320. Wow. Explain what happened with the quality control issues with the P365. Tell us how SIG responded to prevent that from happening in the future. So first batch, we got a handful of uh, strikers that were a little too hard. And did we have some broken strikers? We did. First, I've spent three years now, I believe it was 1,400. First 1,400 guns that went out, handful of Strikers that were over hardened made them brittle, and we had some broken strikers. The number, and again, I haven't had looked at the statistics in, since it happened, but I believe the complaint ratio in customer service was less than 2%. So of those first 1,400 365s that went out, there were a handful. We, we quickly identified the problem. We found the over hardened strikers. We put tremendous quality controls in place to make sure it didn't happen again. And so, as I think you know this week, we just mm -hmm. pulled the one millionth receiver off the line for the P365. Mm -hmm. So we've made a million now in a very short period of time. The first 1,400 had a very small percentage of overhardened strikers uh, that did break, full disclosure. Mm -hmm. Stopped it, stopped production. Told anybody that might have gotten one in this serial number range, send it in, we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, so the other 999,000 you know, mm -hmm. 800 and whatever, I'm not a mathematician, but those guns have, have not seen that issue. So I, I don't know how to answer it other than we made, you know, in, in that first batch, we had a, a, a little problem. We, we shut it down, we, we fixed it, and it's haunted us, you know, well, obviously we've done all right. We've made a million guns, but right. we still, every time in the 365, there's something out on the internet. It's Here like, we are. oh, I can't trust that gun because, uh, well, just talk to, police units, talk to people who own it, talk to people who shoot it, talk to ranges who have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. We have dealers tell us all the time. It's frustrating because people still come in from that little hiccup and say, oh, I don't know, it's my everyday carry gun, can I trust it? I will definitively say, based on what I know about our records and our customer service, you can trust the 365. Can one break? Just like any other mechanical product or gun, it can break. My good friend Clint Smith told me one time, and this is going to be a really offensive statement to some people probably. Clint? Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> uh, back in my days when I was at Smith & Wesson, I was in a, a media event, and I had an M&P pistol go down, and I was distraught that one of our prototype guns went down. And Clint just looked at me and said, Tom, you are aware the space shuttle blew up twice. Yeah. So you've probably heard him say it yeah, before. Yeah, I've heard but him it's say like, that before. It's a just, Clintism. It's just a part of, of manufacturing and machines. Things break. But... We had a problem, we fixed it. It was a minuscule number of the first guns and I think our record would suggest that we've, we've moved on. Is there any possibility that the P365 will move away from a proprietary rail or be offered with an M1913 standard rail? So I doubt it because 
our engineers did the research and there's not enough uh, real estate for that rail, so that's why we made it proprietary. We could do that, but you'd put a product on there and our customer service hotline would light up and say, why isn't this accessory staying on this rail or fitting on this rail properly? If you do the, if you do the math, we could have done it. We knew we could have done it, but we didn't feel good about it because we'd be giving you something that wouldn't work across the board. Are there any new P365 models on the horizon? Absolutely. Will the P365 ever be introduced in another caliber other than 9mm? Absolutely part two. Is that 10 is that millimeter? Is that, yeah, that's good enough. Is <laughs> that 10 millimeter? 10 millimeter P365, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, explain the rationale with the optics mounting patterns you've now used on your various pistols and how that's changed, like why? For whatever reason, our, our optics team decided out of the gate that we wanted to be proprietary. Uh, you know, I think we've collectively decided that was not a good decision. Like I said, we, we like to look ourselves in the eye when, when we didn't make a great decision and say, you know what, maybe that wasn't the best path. Obviously a lot of guns were made that, that had the, the proprietary platform. And if we had it to do over again, I don't think we would have done it that way. We're trying to correct it. What it's done is it's created a, almost a matrix of, you know, guns and optics and what fits what and what does what. And uh, it's unfortunate. We're, we're taking efforts to clean it up. Uh, it will get cleaned up. But it was just, in my opinion, it was just a decision that we probably should have done differently. Will you guys ever introduce P22 series optics ready slides for standalone purchase? P22, like? A 226. Any 22, yeah. Uh, a classic. Yes, yeah. You know, as we move down the path with all these different products, and especially as the, uh, the world converts to pistol optics, uh, almost every platform that we have will, will be selling components and slides and that sort of thing that, that work with our pistol optics. Our sort of advertising campaign we're launching, we're actually slow rolling it because we can't keep up with demand on our, our uh, pistol mounted optics, our, our Romeo 1s and zeros and so forth. Um, but as that red dot revolution, we like to call it, starts and uh, the guns start to ebb and flow that way where more and more guns have it, um, we'll, have, we'll have slides at some point that have that. And, and will we have it on classics? Yes. Will we have it on all of our guns? Yes. Will we explore whether we should even have other manufacturer slides and things like that with those, uh, those mounts on it? Uh, maybe. You know, we, 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 we think that this is where the world's going, just like it did with ARs 10, 12 years ago. Will the SIG P210 be offered in calibers other than 9mm? Not on the drawing board right now. I mean, it's a classic gun, 9mm, not on the drawing board. Not saying no, not on the drawing board. Will SIG continue to renew the California approved registry for the SP2022? I don't even know the terminology. I know nothing about the California shit. And support the gun for California consumers. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, uh, California is a massively important state. We want to serve the, uh, our customers there, and so we have no plans to. Uh, it's not easy. It's hard. It's a hard. It's hard to interrupt our manufacturing for a gun like that. But we we don't have any plans to discontinue it. When will the silencers from Shot 2020, that is the Mod X for the pistol and the what SLH and SLX mm -hmm. for the rifles, when will those actually hit the market? Soon. I'll, I'll say. I'd like to say before the end of this year, which is still a little bit of a long window. So. Theoretically, sooner than that. So we're, we're, we're on the horizon of those very soon. Do you have any plans to modify semi-auto rifles, like, for example, the MPX or the MCX, uh, to be sold in banned states? I mean, I'd like to answer yes to the question. But as I've alluded to a couple times, we, we, we were behind in capacity on those, those products. And I don't mean to be, say to those people in those states, uh, Screw, Screw you. you. I don't, I don't want to say that. I don't mean to say that. But, but you can only do so much. But we can only do so much. Has SIG considered coming out with a value line of pistols or rifles or carbines? No. Was the M400 series of rifles discontinued? No. More of just a renaming or rebranding. I mean, in, in some of our collateral, we still call the tread rifle the, rifle the M400 tread. So really the tread rifle. And you asked the question before, will we ever consider a value line? I mean, the Tread Rifle is a $799 AR rifle in a market where the most popular guns are $499 or whatever. So that is our version of a value offering. It's still a high quality SIG, it's still an M400, but we took some measures, mostly cosmetically, to, to offer it at a little lower price. So that the M400 is alive and well. We, have some, we actually have some really cool ideas on the relatively near horizon on the M400 platform. So no, not going away at all. Last question. This is from the viewers. 
Would you make James leave SIG if he was wearing his short shorts? We discussed this, and I, I told him if he really felt compelled, it's a hot uh, July day, so you know you could have gone that route if you wanted to. You know, yeah, I, I know you're you're sockless. That's the next best thing, and <laughs> keeping your ankles cool. So, you know, this is this is something I know it's who you are. So, you could have gone down that path if you wanted to. Best interview I think in the history of TFB TV. I know we joke around a lot, but this truly was an honor. Thanks again, and, and thank Absolutely. you for answering all these questions, honestly. It's very tough. You mm -hmm. guys know you're a massive company now, like 2,500 employees, thereabouts. Uh, it's hard for people out there, for our viewers to get a direct line. But Patreon supporters, subscribe star supporters, we brought it to you. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks again to SIG for having us, guys. That's it. Why are MPX mags so damn expensive? I want to know. They're plastic. You <laughs> 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 All right, next. <laughs>